Hello. On today's how to for ClickUp, we're going to set up for a construction contractor how to manage their client projects. So the scenario today is a roofing contractor is struggling to keep track of projects from the initial estimate to final completion. They're missing follow ups with potential clients, not good, losing track of project statuses, also not good, and failing to schedule teams efficiently also really bad. So the solution is we're going to set up a client projects workflow in ClickUp, and we're going to go step through step how to do that. Again, why should you listen to me? I'm Jed. I'm the founder of Hydrant. Um, as far as what I do, I am I live, eat, sleep, and breathe project management. I'm the founder of Hydrant, and I'm expert vetted on Upwork, which means top 1%. Uh, I've led over 50 projects in my career, probably closer to 70 at this point. I have a certification from Stanford University for advanced project management uh, and over 15 years experience. We do a lot of work around setting up ClickUp for clients as well as running software projects and uh, staffing project managers. So let's get into it. Next, let's first start with creating a space in ClickUp for us. So I'm going to use this template space that I have here and I'm going to add a new folder and we're going to call it roofing clients. And I'm just going to go, uh, I'm going to start with here, but actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and set up our custom statuses. Um, and let's start here with estimate needed. This is not started. Estimate sent. Um, let's add, whoops. And you're, you're going to see my mistakes too. So that's good. And then let's add project approved. Maybe that feels like a, that feels like it's active as opposed to not started. So let's put a project approved here because if it's approved, then, you know, maybe they paid a deposit or something like that. It's kind of like actually going to happen. Let's do in progress completed. And then follow up. I like follow up. That's going to be a good one. I think um, I'm going to move this to done. Um, and in fact, I'm going to move completed to done as well. And uh, we'll talk about done versus closed at some point here. I'm going to hit uh, apply changes. And I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, create. Cool. So now we've got our folder here for roofing clients with some custom statuses. So you can see estimate needed here. I'm just going to X out of that. Okay, now what do we want each feel, what each task to look like? So I think, I think the task name is going to be the client name. I like that. So if we go back to here, we kind of got this done. We got statuses and client projects done. Let's strike that out. Now we're going to add some custom fields. So like, what does our task actually need to be? And I, I like the idea of client name. That's like the job title. So I'm going to do... Um, a friend of mine, let's do Tyler Vale. This is the name of the job. And then um, we need a contact number. So I'm gonna create a custom field for that. And we got this phone number field, which is nice. Client uh, contact number. Hit create. So that's showing up. Let's put that here. And uh, let's do 0800-508-9999. That seems like a fun one. Okay, and then project value. Okay, this is a great one. I like knowing the size of my project. So if this is a really small project, great. Project value. That's money. Or hit create. Type And these values are important because if you integrate with other surfaces or, you know, th there's... There's always kind of like a good reason for having um, a specific uh, field type because that'll help you refer back to other parts of your ClickUp setup effectively. If you're concerned about like long-term viability in ClickUp, you're like, oh, I don't know. We're probably going to, we're going to grow so fast over the next year that we outgrow ClickUp. Um, then you can use, um, always just use text fields, simple text fields. That can be, uh, if you're concerned about that. Project value, okay, this is a roofing client, so I don't know how much a roof costs. Let's say like, I don't know, $8,500. And then a start date, that seems useful. We have a D 
due date. Oh, but we need a start date. So let's go to and start date, I believe, is a custom or is not a custom field. It should just be a regular field. So in that case, we just want to show um, the start date. OK, I'm going to hit that. And I kind of went through that quickly. But uh, again, if you hit plus, you can add fields. And you can go that way. I just realized I am in the folder as opposed to the list. So let's go to the list. Oh, no. It looks different. So whenever you're in a folder, you're looking at all the lists inside. And right now, we really want to be in the list. But no problem. I'm just going to go back here. And it should have those fields. So oh my gosh, we have so many different fields here. Um, contact phone. Let's add that. Um, client name is going to be the name of the task. And then project value. We can always search, which is nice. Let's add that. And then start date, we already have that as a field. So we're just going to go to one of these hidden fields and hit start date. And then estimated completion date, we're going to just use due date. How about that? So, oh, but I'm missing the phone number, unless I already have that here. OK, I got that here. OK, I'm going to make these smaller just so we can see a little bit better. We got due date. And you know what? I'm going to remove priority. Priority is nice, but it's kind of like you want the simplest view possible here. So we got the phone number. Uh, OK. Let's put that in again. Whoops. And then we got this here. Um, let's say we're going to, OK, let's put start date in front of due date. And then assignee. Do we really need assignee? Yeah, I think we might. So. Um, we, we might want to assign this to a crew. If we don't want to use individuals, we could create a custom field around crews. So that could be interesting. Um, let's say this is going to start on the 21st, and this is going to end. Roof, how long does it take? Maybe 10 days? Okay, let's put the 30th. Probably don't want to be roofing in October, but there you go. Okay, so now we've got this set up. So Tyler's in here, and you could actually have this set up. So like, if you had a form uh, from your website or from your CRM, you could actually create uh, a new form as an input form or like a contact form. And that could actually populate into here where we have an estimate here. So, all right, so let's go back to our agenda. So we've got the custom fields going. Next, we want to create a task template for new projects and include some common subtasks. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this. You're gonna love this. Okay, so we're gonna go in here. And what I'm going to do is go into action items. I don't love subtasks. I like having a checklist. And I'm going to copy paste and see it's going to detect multiple lines. Create checklist from items. Oh, I love that. OK. And let's rename this um, project roofing project template checklist. Cool. And then what I'm going to do, I could save this actually as a template. So um, let's do that just for fun. Roofing contractor. And I always date my templates because when you have a lot of them and you don't clean them out, it's nice to see when you did it. OK, so now we save that. OK, so and this is cool because it tracks how many of the things have been done in the, in the uh, checklist. So now. Um, we're in list. OK, so let's see. Go back to our agenda. OK, we got a task template for new projects includes common. So we could have done it with subtasks. I like it with checklist. It, it's really like a problem with subtasks is they get lost. And especially if you do multiple layers of subtasks, you're going to get even more lost. So I think it's like um, shout out to Cody Schneider. I'm trying to make this as good a video as possible. Anyways. Um, try to do subtask like you can play with subtasks, but I, I just think they get lost. Um, sometimes you can, you can do down to six levels if you enable the click app. You can have six layers of subtasks. Maybe you want to do that. Maybe you're a smart sheets guy or Microsoft project person, um, lady, and you want to have uh, all those layers of tasks. You can do it that way. Um, so, but I don't like it because it gets lost. Um, and then now what I'm gonna do is let's go back here and what i want to do is this estimates in here and i just for fun i'm going to duplicate this task 
I'm going to create a new one, um, Andreas Horowitz, just for fun. Duplicate. Okay, that's here. And, and let's say, um, you know, Tyler, we have an estimate. We have a value, I should say. Um, we have dates. So I'm going to actually move this task to scheduled. Okay. So now it's showing and scheduled and okay. But, but don't we want to see like top down, like scheduled is already happening. So maybe we want to show it differently. Okay. I'm going to hit status and I'm going to go descending instead. And ClickUp's always going to ask if you want to save your changes. Let's go ahead and hit save. Cause I like seeing kind of like, Earlier in the pipeline, I want to see up here, and later in the pipeline, I want to see down below. For some reason, that works for my head. Okay, so let's say this one, we don't have a date, we don't have a value. So let's delete that. And let's actually delete the checklist, because I just want to show you an automation. And I'm going to quickly set up an automation. Sometimes it takes a minute. And what I'm going to do is this automation rule is here in templates, roofing clients, it's just located here. And when I want, when the status changes to estimate, um, actually, I think let, let's do project approved. Um, actually, you know, let's do from not started. No, confirm to project approved. So when it gets workflowed, status moves to work project approved. Then what I want it to do is I want to apply a template and we got all these templates. Where's the one that I just made? I can't see it for some reason. Sometimes it takes a minute when you save templates. Um, but it'll, it should show up. Um, let's say, let's just use this pro this project management one just for fun. It's going to apply a template and, and ideally we would have our template already loaded in there, but sometimes templates take a few hours to like replicate across all the databases at ClickUp. So, um, that's, what's probably going on there. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit create and I can always change it. It's easy once you kind of get the hang of this. So now what happens is we need an estimate. Let's say we get an estimate. Okay, this one's gonna be 5870. Now I want to workflow this to project approved. And what it should do, and sometimes it takes a minute, but it's going to actually automatically add that checklist. So let's go in it, let's see what happened. Oh, we had this check, we had this set up for subtasks. So what it did is it added all these as subtasks. And now they're all here. So that's kind of cool. Um, now let's see, right now, maybe we don't like this, uh, this list view. Right now they're kind of grouped in status. Maybe you like a board view. Um, let's just do that really quick. If I hit board, this is a default view. Now we can see all these different cards and when they're scheduled. And you could organize this based on date, you can obviously move these around, um, but that's kind of like a different way we could use the board. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful and not too long. We kind of went through, again, uh, statuses, client projects list in a folder, uh, multiple custom fields, adding a task template, and then how does the board view, uh, how, how would we visualize projects on a board view, and then a simple automation. So hopefully that's helpful for you guys, again, uh, really fun chatting with you. Leave a comment, ask more questions. You can always find us at hydrant.us. All right. Thanks so much. Bye.